wonderful people of God. You are welcome on the show, God's Word for today. This message is brought to you this and every Sunday. You can keep watching and keep sharing to bless many souls, and your life will never be the same. I'm your brother, Richmond. Stay tuned and enjoy God's Word. Forget not that we are streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube, Ashtown TV. Share to bless many souls, and it's a way of evangelizing the Word of God to many, and your reward will be in heaven. Beloved, I'm speaking to you on a very important subject, subject that will bring your attention to the things of God, to heaven, and to bring you closer, and to have the mindset that there is a place that we go and spend eternity, and we need to prepare ourselves and store up treasures in heaven. I'm speaking to you today on the subject title, Divine Investment. Divine Investment. In life, we all invest in one way or the other. An investment is the act of putting money or treasure into something in expecting a profit or a reward back. And in life, we all invest in one way or the other. Some invest in banks, invest in businesses, invest in education, invest in farmers, invest in our children. We do many investments on earth. But one thing that I want to bring our understanding to is that as we are investing physically, which is good, we should also be mindful of investing in spiritually, in heaven. Christians, we are not only living as physical beings, but we are also living in the spiritual realm. As we are mindful of the body, we should also be mindful of our spirit. As we take good care of our body, we invest to the body. We eat, we put on cream to keep the body in well shape and well nourished. So we need to put our spiritual things right. We need to invest in the spirit. So I want to ask you, how much have you invested so much in the spirit? How much have you invested in the heavens? How much treasure have you stored up in the heavens? Because you get to understand that you spend at least less than 200 years on earth. And if you are building big houses, which are fine, buying big houses, which are good, building estate, building big things for yourself, which is very good, how much have you put together in heaven? Because there you are going to spend eternity. And the longer period you stay, that means you need to put much things in heaven. And by the end of this video, you understand how and how to transport your wealth from earthly realm to the spiritual realm so that you have many treasure stored up in heaven. Let us read Matthew chapter number 6. That is our main text for today. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 19 to 21. We will take it one after the other. Matthew chapter 6, first verse 19 and i read matthew 6 chapter 19 do not store up yourself treasures on earth where mouth and rule destroy and where thieves break and steal verse 20 but store up for yourself treasures in heaven in heaven where mouth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal Verse number 21, so very important. For where your treasures is, there your heart will also be. Be be our kuma, we japa diye wano. E hona wa kuma wano. Ma, me papa, him for na wu siye siye, we japa diye wano. Bible says, se di siye siye, niye ma ewa hune mu, ye waka se wadan, ye siye siye niye mano. San so su ne wase, ye siye siye, ye japa diye, ewa soro. Because e hokura niye be tina, nda e niye wye. A high bedded 200 years, 120, 80, 70 years. It means yes, 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 y
that investors look up to. One, the right place to invest. Any investor, when he's about to invest, he check where am I going to invest? The right place to invest so that my money do not go waste. Two, the outcome of the profit, the outcome of the investment. How much am I going to get out of this investment that I'm doing? I'm being investing. And the last one is the security of the investment where I'm investing my money. What is the security? How sure am I that this money will not go in waste, but I will get them all back with my profit? These three things are the first priorities of every investor. And the text that we just read informed us that heaven is the right place to invest. Because if you invest in the heavens, it is the right place because we are going to spend eternity there and you enjoy it to the fullest. It is the right place because you have 100% increase. The profit is well assured. Jesus, in response to answering the question of Peter, he said, anyone that has left houses, that has left family, that has left anything, Anyone that has lost anything for the kingdom's sake, that person has not lost it. That person will receive hundredfold on earth here and also receive hundredfold in heaven. So whenever you invest into the kingdom of God, support the work of God, invest into ministries, helping others, you have not thrown the money in vain. You have invested into the heavens and you receive it here and also in heaven it is the right place to invest and we know that there is a good security when we invest in the hands of god for in the hands of god the thief and the robbers cannot go and steal if you can trust your soul your spirit your future in the hands of god how can't you trust your money into the hands of god in the hands of god there is safety hallelujah i want to ask you you know the amount in your bank account. You know the number of houses you've built. You know the amount of your real estate, the wealth and the value of it. How much have you accumulated so far in heaven? And in the bank account of heaven with your name, how much amount is accumulated there? That is a question that you need to answer yourself. Straight to the point, someone who asks, Man of God, how will I invest into the heavens? How will, I, how will I transport my money from the earthly realm to the bank of heaven? What is the portal? What is the Momo code for me to send my money from the earthly realm, Ghana, Africa, to store up in the heavens? There are seven direct ways, but I will give you three today. Number one, how to invest in the heavens. How to store up your treasures in heaven. Number one, giving to the poor. Matthew chapter 19, verse number 21. Matthew number 19, verse number 21. Whenever you give to the poor, it is a way of storing up to the heavens. Let's read Matthew 19, 21. Matthew 19, 21. Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasures. Treasures. Tezaros. You have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. Hallelujah. Beloved, the Bible says that if you want to be perfect, we need to give to the poor. And by so doing, we are heaping our treasures in the heaven. The poor people around your shop, the poor people around your business, the poor people at your vicinity, at your house, the poor people you see at church every day coming to church with the same clothes, with the same shoe. Try to help them. Try to give to them. Try to feed them. And as you are doing this, you are storing up treasures in heaven. If you have money that you want to give to God, you want to send to your bank account in heaven. What you need to do is to give to the poor in a good heart. 
not in a grudgingly, but out of a good willing heart, you give to the poor. And the Bible said, Jesus encountered this man at Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said, man, go and sell all what you have and give to the poor. And the rich man said, I am a wealthy man. I cannot give all to the poor. Why? Because the man's heart has entered into the world. I want to set the record straight. That money is not evil. Sika enye boni, but bra wa kuma wa jinebe ku disika no so ati nyango pono e hone man ye boni. This young man said, Master, I respect you a lot. I believe in you a lot, but I have a lot that I cannot give to the poor because my heart is in the world. And the Bible said, What? Wherever your treasures are, there also your heart is. Let us not be controlled by our treasures. Let our treasures not control us because it has a greater influence on us. Wherever your treasures is, your heart is also. So when your treasures is basically on the earth, then the earth will control you and the things of the earth will control you. But if your treasures are in heaven, your mind and everything will be controlled in heaven. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 says that whenever you give to the poor, you have lent it unto God and God will pay you back. Whenever you are giving to the poor, you have not thrown the money away. You have not wasted the money away. You have given it to God. And God is a faithful man and a faithful God that he will give it to you back. So you want to give to God? Give to the poor. Sincerely poor people. Out of a good heart. Give to the poor. And it's a way of giving to God. That is why Lazarus said, Zacchaeus said, whatever that I have stolen from others, I give it back to the poor four times. I give half of my wealth to the poor. He knows that giving to the poor is transporting the money to the heavens. And in the bank of heaven, he will have account and it will be loaded with much cash. I want to bring to your notice. Let's help the poor. Let's help the weak. Let's help the less privileged. And God will remember us and bless us. Number two, how to transport your money from this realm to the heavenly realm is to be generosity and willingness to share with others. Being generous and be a blessing to many people. You don't have it all to yourself. God did not bless you just for you and your family, but God bless you for you to be a blessing to many people. Afo from so ebe yinshira wo ya drobe yinshira nem fa mu na afo from pim pim on so en san ko wana no na wun shire nyami di en nun ti na wadi shira so God said to Abraham I'll bless you and the nation will be a blessing I'll bless you and many people around you will be a blessing ask yourself how many people have you transformed their life how many people have you blessed in your church in your house there are some ladies there all what they need is hundred cities. All what they need is 200 cities. All what they need is 500 cities. And they can start doing something. Teach them how to fish. Don't give them fish all the time. And with that, five, six, ten years to come, they'll be at the top, giving glory to God. And by so doing, you are heaping to the heavens. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. After that, we'll take the 18. And after that, we'll take the 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's take verse 17. This is a command. The Bible said, Command those who are rich in this present world now not to be arrogant. The rich, listen. The Lord is telling you not to be arrogant because of your wealth. Not to put their hope in wealth. Don't put your hope in wealth. For wealth will fail you. Wealth will deceive you. It has wings. It can fly. Which is so uncertain. That is it. The wealth is uncertain. Sika, a turbine. 
what do I come at us? It's an hour to one in the new But to put their hope in God, for our Kuma, Senior Gopomo, who richly provide us with everything for our enjoyment. Verse number 18. That is the command number two. Command them to do good. We are commanding the rich people, those that have everyone to do good. To be rich in good deeds. Not to be rich in corruption, but to be rich in good deeds. And to be generous. That is my word. To be generous. And to be willing to share. Share. Verse number 19. I like that one so much. In this way, in this way, you will lay treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming ages so that they may take hold of their life that is truly life. Hallelujah. Bible calls something truly life. He said that when you are generous, when you give to others, you become relevant. And by so doing, share with others, blessing others, letting others glorify God because of you, by so doing, you will store up treasures in heaven. There was a woman in the book of Acts with the name Dorcas. The Bible said that Dorcas was generous. Dorcas were feeding people, helping the gospel, promoting the work of God with all what he was having. She was having. The Bible said a time came. As it is appointed unto man to die once. A time came that the lady gave up. He died. The people wept and said that no, this woman cannot go. We cannot lose a woman like this. Why? Because he saw generosity. He, he shared whatever she has with others. And as now that she's dead, who will take over the poor? Who will look over the widows? Who will look over the orphans? No, we cannot afford to lose this one. Get Peter and let Peter come. The Bible said they invited Peter. They sent Peter to the upper room to pray and said, Peter, you know something? We, we can't lose this one. She's so relevant to us that we can lose, we need her on earth. The Bible said that they prayed, Peter prayed, and the woman was resurrected back. I want to ask you, in your days of coma, when you can't speak for yourself, what will speak for you? Let your giving speak for you. The Bible said that, Colonials, you are giving, your generosity has reached heaven and it is speaking for you. Let us share what we have with others. Let us take good care of our widows. Let us take good care of our orphans. And it is a way of giving to God. God says that Nyame some papa abujo a woman. And it's a yeko hinyanka. Ye boy and we see ye boy a kuna for and no ni some papa no. So whenever that we give to the widows, whenever we give to the poor, whenever we give to the orphans. It is a way that we are transporting. It is a momo that we are momoing our earthly wealth to the heavenly wealth. And God will have mercy upon us one day because the Bible said that I'll have mercy on those that have mercy on others. If you don't have mercy on others, God will not have mercy on you because you don't share with others. You don't bless others. Bless others and God will bless you. The last point that I bring to a conclusion the third point, the first one is to give to the poor. The second one is to be generosity and share and bless the widow and the orphans. And the third one is to give tithe, offering, giving to support the kingdom business. Let's support the kingdom business. After supporting one another, let us support the church. Let us finance the church. Let us finance evangelism. Let us finance the spread of the message to the rural area. People, let us take the business of the cross upon our shoulder. Let us take it as our own business. That is our main core. That is our core subject. The other things that you are doing, our business and everything, they are elective subjects. They are secondary. Our main objective is to send the message across the world. If you are not doing it yourself, try and support those that are doing it your money. Help the church with your resources. Pay your tithe. Give generous offering. And by so doing, supporting the kingdom, you are storing up treasures in heaven. I know that what some men of God are doing is no good and it's not right. But if you find a genuine man of God, 
where you sow seed and you receive abundantly. You need to sow much. And God will bless you out of what you've generously given. And your work will not be in vain. To bring this message to a close, all what I've said is that whenever that you give unto poor people, whatever that you invest into the kingdom, whatever that you give in the support of the kingdom of God, God will reward you. But under one condition, and that is where I'll close with, under one condition, so what do you here for? What do you sorry? Now say, Adia may be crying, unti me nya dia enye jai, oma no enshire nim. Ene se, se un sabbe nkumi ya adia me ni fo unhunu. Ni fansu ya adia me bo nkumu unhunu. Me ma, enko kanchira ma unfo se, enye mi anko insha ta adie. Me ma, enko kanchira ma unfo se, enye mi anko insha insha juma se. Me ma, enche ntu tu bento eni we ni mu. En me ni pe nyine hun sa mpa, o ya adoye. Babo se basa adia, wenye we ketu ya, e we ni pe ni mu. Yen kain Bible, Bible kasa. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, from verse 1 to verse 4, but there is verse 2 now. Matthew chapter number 6, verse 1 to 4. Let's look at verse 2. Bible is a very interesting book. Nyamyasem, eh, teye. Bra, a money for who they will give you. Verse 1 says, Be careful not to do your act of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do you know be rewarded from your father in heaven verse 2 so when you give to the needy do not announce it with trumps as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to be honored by men i tell you the truth they have received their reward in full but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand see what your right hand is doing. Verse 4. So that you are giving may be in secret. Then your father who is in heaven, who knows the secret, will reward you. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying that whenever that we are giving, and you want your giving to be recorded in heaven, if you want your giving to attract the blessings of God, then don't blow trumpet. Don't carry cameramen around. When you are going to give to the orphanage, when you are going to give to people, when you are going to give to the widows, when you are going to give to people, don't carry cameramen with the intention to show it to people that you've also done it. If you are giving sanitizers, it's fine. Veruca bucket is fine. Feeding people is fine. But why from the publicity to show people that you too you are doing? If you do it in that way, that means you have received your reward in full by men because people are hailing you and saying, that, oh, Papa, where do you are you? He's a generous man and that is your reward. So many people call me and say, Papa, we've been giving every year at annual harvest, but we can't see anything. I tell them that check from this verse. If you do it with a mindset of publicity for people to know that I'm also giving without a good heart, then you lose all everything. So give to the poor. Give to the widow. Give in support of the business of God, but not with publicity. Don't let the left hand look at the right hand, see what he's doing. When the Bible says that the left hand and the right hand, he said the Bible called the whole body as a church. So don't let what you, you are doing, don't let a brother, other brother, see what you are doing. If you are doing this, don't let the other apostle know what you are doing. Do it in secret, and God, who sees the things in secret, will reward you. And your life will never be the same. Let us do well. And be heavily conscious. And invest in heaven. And store our treasures. Not only on earth. But in heaven. God bless you. See you next time. I'm your brother Richmond. Stay tuned and share and bless many people. God bless you. Shalom. Peace. Bye bye.